Yo, dude, what up, man? Hello, hello. How you doing today? Good, good. Good? Sounded good. Sound chipper. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. I, 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 I've had like this uh, period of a lot of work and not much play, so I like logged. I've sort of gotten back to StarCraft and I'm like completely terrible, but it's still good. Nice. Uh, how, when's the last time you actually got found time to play? Yeah, that's fuck. You're rusty, <laughs> yeah. So what are you thinking about today? What's, uh, you just want to, like, have a general, like, yell at me, get back into the game kind of a session? Or <laughs> what are you thinking? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I guess, in terms of replays, I have, like, me playing shoddily, but still kind of winning a couple of Sir versus Terrans. Okay. I... Or I have like me getting killed by everything in Zerg vs. Zerg. I guess something something I, I I wanted to ask you for something. Like you've done you've done build for builds for me in like versus Terran and versus Protoss. Um, I guess I don't really know even what to do against Zerg, and maybe maybe it's a good time to talk about that since I'm a little bit mad about Zerg vs. Zerg. Yeah, I mean I'm down. That sounds good to me. We could definitely do some ZVZ instead and. Uh figure out some ideas for you there uh like really just figure out like your preferred play style then help you kind of make it work um yeah i mean i'm down whatever whatever sounds good to you that sounds good to me uh i would say yeah, CVC, CVC sounds like yeah. good. okay let's do some zvz uh so i will hop over to europe really fast or you know what actually you want to, this is a new thing i've been doing and i don't know if you and i have done this yet uh but if you want you can actually send me the replay on Discord in the little private chat we have right here, and then I can yeah. uh, share my Discord screen with you, so you can actually see what I'm looking at personally, like what my uh, screen's looking at. So yeah. I don't have to explain. Like, so right now I'm at the natural, and over on the right side of the natural, you can just see my mouse like green boxing shit, and it's way easier to like, explain shit. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. These replays are like all really fucking short, I think. And name them something sensible, and then I can send them to you. Sure, no worries. Without too too many like swear words and stuff. No, you're all, <laughs> you're all good. I'm just gonna open it from Discord so people won't even see the replay name. <laughs> it's like this fucking Zerg. <laughs> I think like the basic story is like I I don't know how to scout. I don't know how to react to anything, and like yeah. Well, actually, I think I won that one, but I mean, you can, I probably played ridiculously unsafe in the beginning and sure. won because I survived, so let's, let's throw that in. Well, uh, I mean, basically what, what I do is I try to get like 60 drones and then, then build roaches. Okay. Like oh yeah. Perfect. Okay. That's in in one, one sentence. That's perfect. No, that's probably the easiest way to play ZVZ. I'm not even kidding. That's, uh, there's multiple ways you can get to that point if you want to, but just straight up, if you're the kind of guy that wants to be a three base mass roacher. That's very viable for a very long time. Like, you can still win games like that all the time, even in GM. Uh, super viable play. All right, let's see this. Uh, which, do you want me to look at number one or number two first? Number one, I assume? Yeah, I'm, I'm not actually sure which one it's which. Sure, I, mean, I can open I it. Just, like, if, if you... I mean, they're like, they're like a couple of minutes. Sure. Uh, you're against White Widow in this one that I just opened. Uh, you should be able to see my screen there, right there. now there on Discord. Yep. Okay. So, uh, overall in ZVZ, there's two ways you can open uh, to make it work. You can go for a greedier wall off, which is you don't make it, you like kind of skip the Ling Bane phase for the most part. And you just straight go into like fucking defensive wall off with queen into into drone into just straight up roaches. Another way you can play it out is you can be the kind of guy who wants to take a faster third, which is going to give you extra larva. And with that extra larva, you need to actually play the Ling Bane game a little bit more. <coughs> both styles completely are viable. Uh, both styles have their own versions of power, like their own merit of why they're good. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I guess. Uh, We'll kind of see how you open here, but either style works, honestly. Yeah, I think, I mean, spoiler, I used to do, like, Roach wall off stuff sure. um, before, and now I'm, like, I'm doing, like, 
zergling openings in all three matchups. Oh, but honestly, no. I, I think I have the least idea what to do with the links in CVC. Zerg anyway. players play with bugs, yet they use yeah, best no control just like the rest um, of us. So, Curious. Uh, so, so far, I mean, you're doing fine. Everything looks okay. Nothing really to say here so far. Uh, yo, Parlag, thanks for the, uh, the 17 months, man. Much love. Thank you, thank you. And... Mm -hmm. Your gas timing is good. So, I'm gonna see how you saturate the gas, too. This is kind of important. I don't... I want... So, this is the only matchup you should actually pull off the mineral line to saturate. And the only... You only have to pull uh -huh. one drone off. You, you only have to pull one drone off, because, uh, you'll have two of your three on the gas in time for the gas to be saturated properly because you just had one go into it. If you pulled off one of the drones off the mineral line right now to have the second one go into it, by the time he mines it, your third one would spawn out of the egg if you made it on time, uh, which it pretty much is almost on time right now. You're like, I think you're like maybe one second off because it would be like only one second late, but it would basically, the third drone out of for the gas would be out of your egg and you'd only have to, uh, uh, then, then, you know, fix your mineral line back to 16 from 15 out of 16. And the reason why this is so important is because uh, you don't ever, like, you don't need to do that if you're going to do the wall off thing, but you do need to do this if you're going to do the speed link thing. Because the worst thing in the world you can do is allow your opponent to have, like, 15 seconds or, like, 10 seconds of speed advantage over you because they might be going for a timing. Or if you're trying to scout, you get denied on scout. And these are both really important because uh, your lanes just get run down and killed because he has speed and you don't. So that's super huge. <clears throat> but yeah, against Protoss and Terran, definitely let, fill your gas up with 16 on the middle lane. Alright, you have double queens going up, which is nice. So another cool trick you can do, too. Uh, here's a cool little tip here. In ZVZ, uh, you're not making an Overlord yet, which I like. I don't know if you make one in general, you, so you do. Okay, so I would say in ZVZ, try... I mean, you made your Overlord right about now, which is pretty much fine. It's super close. You made it at 153, and I would say don't make your Overlord until like two minutes. And the reason why is because if you see a Ling leaving your opponent's base, like if you see the first six, you can kind of tell what kind of ability he's opening with to be aggressive. You can tell if it's a 13 pool or you can tell if it's a 12 pool based on when it crosses your Overlord. And a little cool tip here is if the Lings cross your Overlord around one like 27 to like 134, it's a 12 pool. If his Lings cross your Overlord around like 140 to like 145, it's probably a 13-12. Straight up. And that's if he, like, runs straight from his base to your base. When he crosses your first Overlord, as long as your Overlord goes to the right location to scout his natural, essentially. Um, that's important to know that because you can really... Like, the difference there is... The reason why that matters to know that is if it's a 12 pool, you want to pull drones to defend it. If it's a 13 pool, yeah, yeah, you do not want to pull drones. Yeah, and then I... I don't because then the bane looks exactly like yep exactly and another another way you can reconfirm what it is if you're like fuck what was it i didn't actually know if you go for a 16 hatch the lings should be getting to your hatchery when it's literally like three seconds from finishing or two seconds from finish like it's, it's just about to finish right as the lings start smacking it that's a 12 pool a 13 pool like a, a 13 12 rather like a 13 gas 12 pool those lings would be hitting your hatchery if they go straight for the hatchery around when your hatchery has been done for probably like 10 seconds or like 8 seconds. So that's like another way to reconfirm what you're dealing with. So if, yeah, like def definitely want to be careful there. But some of the timers, that, then the reason why you want to be careful though as well about getting both of these timers is sometimes you might make a weird read based on the fact that if someone literally runs around the map as well, if they want to go like to the right around your overlord and go over here instead, it's going to delay the links too, right? And you don't want to read a 12 pool like a 13 12. Or something like that. That could be a problem for you. So, uh, straight up, all I'm trying to say is, the big, the big reason why this is all relevant is if you don't make an Overlord until two minutes, it's still good on your Larva because you don't Larva cap. You'll still have only two Larva on the hatchery at two minutes. And then that's when you, right when then when you make an Overlord. But if the guy shows you two Lings at a time coming out of his base 
after the first six, if he's the kind of guy that tries to hide the first six, you absolutely will see the next two, two, two coming. And then you can actually go, oh, this guy's actually being aggressive. And he's got lings probably like over here right now. Or he's got lings like over here right now. And they're just like going around the map. So now you can then what you can do is right as your pool would finish, which is in six seconds, that's when your third larva, if, if you, because again, if you do like 16 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool perfectly, your third larva, when you're at 19 supply, your hatchery would have its third larva finish right as your pool finishes. And then the natural also, also finishes within like one or two seconds of that. So your supply would go up to 28 because the hatchery gives you six. And then you'd have one larva plus three larva. So you'd have eight lings immediately to defend aggression. And it makes it so fucking easy to defend pressure in ZVZ. Uh, if you do it that way. But if you realize it's not, you know, an early pool and you get to a point where in two minutes you're still no lings leaving his base to attack you, you can literally make drones and an overlord and then your next couple lings as the pool's done, those could become lings to make the scouts with and shit like that. Uh, and you'd be good to go. And then a cool tip here is, is you can always confirm for sure pretty much what he's doing based on the hatchery timing. So if you see your creep right here is done, you can see it before you see the hatchery. Your creep is literally done right now, and it's right there. His creep is also right there, and you can see that's where his hatchery is supposed to be. So it looks identical to yours, so you can tell you guys both made a hatchery at the same time. And then when you see this, if you see that uh, a hatchery is finished, you can tell when a hatchery is making a queen because the hatchery like jiggles really hard. It like goes, it has this like sucking, like like sucking, spread out motion when it makes a queen. And if he's doing the same build as you, which you can kind of tell he is. At this point, there's no way he could be making a queen and uh, have a hatchery done this fast if it was a uh, pool first. Like, it would be weird as fuck. So, it's it's a hatch first. It's your it's the same build as you. He did a fast expand, just like you did. And you can literally uh, fly in a little deeper because you don't have the fear of losing your overlord yet. This queen's not going to be done for either one of you for about, like, 30 seconds. So, what you can do... Here's a cool trick you can do. If you would fly in a little deeper, you could see his mineral line. Just for a sec, just until I would say a, a, the time you need to get the fuck out would be when the queen, when your queen is at like 13 seconds or like 14, maybe like 15 max, like a little bit less than halfway completed. So halfway completed for a queen here is going to be 18, right? You don't want to stay there until 18. If you stay there until 18, your, your overlord might be like there as the queen's finished and then he might fucking kill you. He might run forward and just try to kill you. But if you leave when it's like 13, 14, your overlord would be like right there. And it's like, it's far enough away at this point to where you're out of vision of his base. And you're also close enough to a cliff where if he did want to come forward, he's going to walk off creep for so long. And you're going to be, you're already going to have a little bit more distance on it. Where if he did want to chase you, you'd, you'd fly over a cliff or something and you'd be fine. You'd, you would not die. Uh, guaranteed. As long as you leave before 18. 17 would be like, you are pushing it. But 18 is like your cutoff. So if you leave it like 13, you're definitely not going to die. But if you stayed here until like 13 seconds, check this out. Watch your watch your uh, your queen here. This is just a cool tip on how you can scout someone early. Let's say you leave right now. Let's say you start leaving right now. So if you start if your overlord's like right there, and you started leaving right now, you can tell kind of what this guy's doing based off of what he does with his mineral line and what he does with his larva. Now here's a cool tip you need to understand. If he does spend his larva really fast, constantly, there are two things that could be. Number one, that might be a guy who's playing economical, making mass drones. And that's great. That's That means you can play, you can make mass drones too if you want to, or you can be aggressive if you want to. Either way is totally fine. But if this guy doesn't spend his larva, if you're like, okay, so I spent my larva a while ago, and his larva is still sitting there. Scratch my head. Hmm, what are you doing? That is a sign of a fucking all-in already. So if, if they spend it fast, it could be all-in, it could be drones. You can tell by based off of what the egg spawns and how many drones are in the middle line. If nothing gets made out of the larva, that is definitely more in the line of an all-in. Because why? Because he, what is he saving for? What is, where is his money going? Is he AFK? Like what's the, where is that money going right now? It's probably going into a tech structure, right? Like, he might also be taking a third base. If you see a drone cross your overlord, then you could be like, okay, he's probably taking a third really fast. And then you can move your overlord when it leaves at 13 seconds over to the third to just confirm that he's taking a third. And that's totally fine, too. 
But if you just stay for a second and see that he's not spinning his larva, yet yeah, you are. Look at your main base, right? You have two drones on the gas. You took one off as you got speed. Great job. Fucking perfect. I love it. Look at his base. He's got three on the gas. He's got speed started. And he didn't take any drones off gas. So this is more likely he's going to throw down a tech structure faster than you are. It doesn't guarantee he has to, but this is already like, he's already behind uh, macro wise. If this is how he wants to play from this point on. So if you were to, and then if you leave, if you were to scout that you could be assuming, okay, maybe he's going to be aggressive. Maybe he's going to do something aggressive. And he also made a Ling and you would see those, you would have seen those Lings as well as you would have left because they ran forward. But as you would have left as well, you know what you would have also seen? A drone. But you didn't... I don't think you actually saw this drone because your lord is too far away. No, I don't think I did. Yeah. So, we'll see if, we'll see if you catch a glimpse of it here. No, you actually catch a glimpse of it very, very briefly. But I don't know if, if you noticed that or not. But if you would have been yeah, a little I, bit... I, I, um, or go ahead, sorry. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, no. No, no. Pr I probably didn't see that. It's okay. Like... It's just, it's just there's so much potential scouting for this Overlord, and it has no risk to die. Because uh, you can see your Queen's still not out yet, right? And this, if he's doing the same build as you are, he'd have the same timing of a Queen. So your Overlord is not even... You, you see how much distance you've already like made between it? Like, if you were leaving at 13 seconds in your Overlord's completion, or in the, in the Queen, rather, and now it's at 23, that would have been like 10 seconds of time for you to go from here to like probably like right there. Right? Like, you you would have made a pretty decent amount of distance in 10 seconds. Like, literally, like there to there. And then you have another still 13 seconds till it's out. So you'd go from, like, there to, like, right there by the time it's out. And you'd be where you are now by the time the queen's out. And you have... And here is safe, right? You have don't even you don't even care. If a queen comes out, you fly this way, and you're probably not going to die. But if you would have seen the, uh, the, the drone going, too, because you were a little bit deeper uh, for a sec, you could then fly your overlord this way, down here to the third base. And you could just confirm you know what you're up against. And this creates opportunity again. This creates, if you know what he's doing, you can be like, all right, I can now take my third base if I want to, to match him, or I can be aggressive if I want to, to punish that. And like go really aggressive here. Like you, and you or you could be aggressive and take a third. Like you could, the, the, the sky's the limit. And you, you could blindly do it as well all the time if you want to. But the problem, here's the problem, okay? This is why this is relevant. If you don't know he's taking a third, and you go, oh, you know what? I'm going to be aggressive. And he goes for the two base wall off roach build. You're probably going to fail. You're, it's probably not going to do much because that roach wall off build counters aggression pretty hard. Like early, it, it, it literally, you can just wall off and have queens killing shit over the wall. It's really hard to break that. And then that fucks you because you get behind early in the game. Just like if you don't scout that he's going for a third base and you don't know if he is or isn't. And let's say he's the kind of guy that just makes mass lings overall. And you're like, okay, well, I didn't scout anything. I don't know he's going for a third, and I don't know what he's doing. And he's the kind of guy that's going to take a third, and he's going to make a Bane Nest, and he's just going to make mass slings off of, like, 18 drones. And you're over here just making drones and uh, taking your own third base. You probably will die. So you need to scout a little bit more to get a re decent read in the early idea of what... Like, get some ideas as to what's going on. And then once you get, no, like, a little bit of an opening idea here... <coughs> and again, Larva is huge, right? Sa someone who saves Larva is definitely either going for a fast third or they're saving for tech. Uh, when they save Larva, it's a sign of maybe they're also not pulling off the gas, which is a sign of aggression. Uh, so that's huge for an early scout, but then following that up with making a, making one ling at least as soon as your pool's done, okay? So you, you would want to have made at least one egg of zerglings right around the time when your queens start. Just one. You can make two if you want, or three if you want. That relies more on, like, you're going to probably be more aggressive with those, though. You're going to probably, like, attack his third base with that if you make, like, three rounds of lings. But at least make one, because what you can do with the one is you can reconfirm shortly after. Like, if you made a ling right as you made the queens, the, ling was already, the lings would already have been out for six seconds, and they would already be probably, like, right there. All right, there they are. Okay, cool. You, made, you did make. You, okay, good shit. I didn't actually see you made these. But good fucking job. You made the lings. Now, these lings need to run to his base... And you need to look at his mineral line. This is so fucking important. Look at his mineral line right now when you get across the map. Because these links will get across the map guaranteed before speed's done. And if this, if he's going no drones on the mineral line. If you're like, okay, I've got like five now. And he's got one. Hmm. Like, what are you doing? 
If he's got no larva, or if he's got uh, no eggs and all larva on the hatchery, same thing again. Scratch your head, right? Maybe he's going for like a roach timing. If he's got, if you, if you get to his base and you have five drones and you have two eggs on the hatchery, and he's got no drones and he's got five eggs on the hatchery, or like one drone and five eggs. So you have the opposite, right? You've got five drones, one egg. He's got five eggs, one drone. That's a fucking sign of he's probably making lings. There's so many fucking things you can read out of people who are early game like this. And early game ZVZ is so important if you're the kind of person that goes for a third base. You need to know this shit. If you're the kind of person that roach walls off, all this shit is kind of irrelevant. Like, like you can still scout with the Overlord and you can still scout with the lings, but you're going to make a wall off anyways. It's the only thing that matters is, is if you see signs of an all-in, you just make it a little faster. And if it's not all-in, you can make it a little later. Because you can be a more economical instead. And not make it so early. That's the only thing it is for roach timings. So anyways, you're scouting. You're going across the map. He's also going across the map with more lings than you. He's got six, you made four. And I could tell that because I saw two go over there. And I saw four go here. So there are... Even though there's four lings like right here. There's two more like over here. Because he, those lings took an awkward path from each other. So there's two right there, and there's four right there. So these are the kind of things you need to notice. You got to be really aware in ZBZ with map, well, just map awareness. You need to see this shit because what's going to happen right now is he invested more into lings than you did. Okay. So now you have a couple choices here. Do you want to stick to this hatchery and try to kill it? Or do you want to pull your lings back now and try to defend because your hatchery is in threat now? Because now what you need to do is you need to either pull your lings back and probably pull a queen to save your third or make more lings and then pull your queen to save your third. Because if this guy wants to attack your third and you attack his third, he's going to kill yours before you kill his because he's got two more lings than you do. He's got he's got six to your four, which is substantially more DPS on the hatchery while it builds. So your hatchery is in threat of dying faster than his. And then he's got to make the same decision. Does he want to make more lings and defend his third? Or does he want to pull back and defend his third? Because He doesn't actually need to pull his queen if he pulls his lings back because he has more than you. If that makes sense. So, this is, like, your advantage is obviously in economy. His advantage is in ling numbers at the moment. Because you're, his, look at his fucking natural. It's, like, it's garbage. It's nothing. Yours is already at five. Which is why I said this is so important to scout this. Because you can already, like, this is another fucking sign that I am not going to be surprised that if this guy makes a bunch of lings and all ends you right now. Like, this looks fucking aggressive already, again. So... Something cool to do with your queen, too. If this ever happens to you, and he doesn't go for the third, and he goes straight for your queen, 100% what you need to be doing right now... And I'm, I'm really glad you made lings, by the way. Good shit. But what you need to be doing with this queen is run it up. Make the lings chase you one direction, okay? Make the lings chase you upwards. And then tuck your queen right there. So all the lings mm, get stuck. Like yeah, literally. <laughs> so all your all your fucking all the lings for him get stuck right here, and only one at a time attacks you, instead of four at a time. Because if you run your if you run your queen like this way right away and it goes up this way and some of the lings decide let's say the AI some of them go this way and go chase you that way and some of them go this way and chase you that way, like you don't want to get surrounded right. You wanna you want them all to chase you into the middle line and then you just walk between the middle line and you guard it on the edge of it. So, yeah, his lings don't... Like, you don't want to stand, like, there, for instance, because then you'll get hit by, like, three lings still. But if you stand there, you'll get hit by one. And the lings are stupid, and it just buys you time. And it makes you... And if the... Your queen could actually kill four lings and not die if you bottleneck them like that. Uh, and it, it, uh, just like I said, it just buys you time to make... To, to buy time for these lings to pop out that you're making. Because uh, at the rate you're going, your queen's probably going to die. Yeah. So a little brutal for you there. And you actually denied his third base. That feels great. That's good. You actually, I would say, the person who gets the advantage, if you deny the third or he kills the queen, I would say, ideally, he gets the advantage. But I would say, because you didn't inject your queen at all, it's kind of even. Like, that's not good for you, that you didn't inject the queen. Uh, your queen died with, like, 45 energy or some shit. And never even injected the hatchery. So that's a little bit brutal. Um, but... Still, getting the third base is a massive win. It's super nice. But do you scout? Like, do you see what's happening here? Right? He's now he's fucking pushing with mass lings. So I don't know if you ever scouted the natural, but that's a huge. I mean, 
and this is some, this is something about ZVZ that you got to be careful of. Once it gets to this point, you're at that point where it's like almost too late. It's not quite too late yet, but it's almost too late. It, you really need a queen right now, though, that died, unfortunately, because what you could do now in a situation like this is you could, put, you could put your queens on the ramp together, and that could once again buy you time, because only four lings can attack queens on the ramp if they're side by side. You don't want the, re the queens at the base of the ramp either, because then they're like six lings going to attack you. You want the queens in the mid or the upper ramp. Like, so there would be good, or like there would be good. And you put them side by side. Because only two queens can hit, or only two lings can hit each queen at that point because the surface area is limited. And queens don't die very fast if only two lings are hitting them, as opposed to like getting fully surrounded by ten of them. So that's a huge way it would buy you time and something cool you could do too if you didn't have enough lings to guard your natural yet. Take your drones and go like this. Hey drones, just minor, mineral walk through the queens back into the main just for a sec until we get this controlled. And you're good to go. And if you really need to, you could even be like, hey drones, mineral walk to the main. And right as they get there, hey, or like, you know, grab like another eight with it and be like, okay, so these five here or these six here plus another eight here. We have, let's say we have like 14 drones coming down now and you mineral walk. Like as soon as your lings spawn and engage, you could be like, all right, queens on the ramp. You're taking the entire time. Lings as they spawn, you guys engage. And as the lings spawn, 14 drones, I pull off the main mineral walk back to my natural and I mineral walk through the lings. And as I get through the lings, I a move with my drones. And you could have drones, lings, and queens fighting his lings. If, he, if That's how you could deal with this if you react to it like this. Like where it's kind of almost too late. And that's because the only reason why this makes sense is because right now you have five more drones than he does. And he's got a lot more lings than you do. So like that's already a difference of ten lings straight up. And if you wait too long to react to something like this, it could be bigger differences. Like if he's got like 20 lings on top of you... That could be something that you need to be a little bit technical to defend, if that makes sense. You, you can't just, like, expect to defend 20, 24 lings with 6 lings and think that's going to break even, right? You're going to get fucking destroyed. So you got to do something a little creative to create number advantages for yourself. And it also, it buys you time, once again, to make more lings. And you have more economy. So even if you lose some drones there, it's still okay. So that's why pulling drones there wouldn't be the worst idea. Against something like if he's gonna like rush you like this, but you could have made lings a little faster if you had scouted. You have five drones on the middle line, and he has zero, and it, you could already have been making lings a little, like right off the bat earlier, and you know instead of having larva, essentially, because you actually made lings a little, for a moment there, to, you know, help deal with to try and save your queen, which is the right move in the fact that he has no drones on his lar on his mineral line. But if you kept making lings nonstop, you would actually have probably like fucking 10 lings already out right now. Even though you have a drone lead. Because you have just larvas, like, you know. I mean, this is obviously injected, but you're like, it's already done, right? That, like, that inject's been done for a few seconds, and uh, your lings would be like probably almost out if you were making them. They'd be like more than halfway done, probably, or like about halfway done. So, I mean, but the point I'm trying to make here is, is you'd have those lings out by the time these guys get here. You wouldn't be starting them as they get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because now when I saw, I, like, I, at some point I saw that, like, train of links running across the map and went, like, okay, fuck, that's... Exactly. TV, basically. Yeah, so that's, and that's why... You... I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm in the game, like, for a few more seconds. So, so you, 100%, you could have defended this. It, like, again, if you, even with the drones you made, you still could have defended... The, the fact that you have 32 drones versus 18, you actually probably still could have defended this if your queen didn't die. Because if you would have put two queens on the ramp and went, oh, fuck, he's all inning me. Let's make lings right now. Your spawning or your bane nest was almost done when you left the game. It was like 75%. It was really close to being done. Okay, I did it again. Jesus, sorry. Pause, pause. There we go. And okay, so we'll just say like right here. It's fine. 31 seconds. It's really close to being done. And if you started making links, you have four larvae as well. If you were making links already, and if these links came back, because you actually ran them down again, if you came back with these links, and you put, let's just say this was the first queen that didn't die, and you put this queen, as you saw him here, you put this queen on this ramp, you put this queen right next to it on the ramp as well. <coughs> and then as the Zerg player is like, you know, let's say he's here, and then He's crossing the map still. 
<coughs> and now the Zerg player is like right here. Or some shit. He's closer to your base. You could grab all your drones and go, hey drones, I want you to right click right here. This mineral patch right here. So all my drones get closer together. They're not like this big conga line that's super long, like an, an, an anaconda drone line. We want a little tiny stacked drone line. So you right click here first. And then once you like right click there, just like for three seconds or two seconds, like just maybe that's like, actually a long time, more like one second, three times. Okay. You just want your drones to get closer together. Once you do that, go to your main base and just right click a patch. Your drones will be a little bit more bunched up then. Your queens will be already on hold position on the ramp. So you don't have to micro them at all. And then your drones will walk through the queens. The lings will arrive. And that's great. That's fine. You're making queens. Or oh, sorry. You're, you're, yeah, you can even, if you have the money to do it, definitely make an extra queen too because your queens might die here. But prioritize making lings first and then make lings second if you have extra money to do it. And you do have plenty of money right now. So you could easily make your lings and queens right now. You fucking easily. Um, and then once the, like I said before, once the lings are almost done, like they're going to spawn any second now. Like, like, so once the lings are like halfway done, you could be like, hey, drones, I'm going to grab you again. And I'm going to pull you back down to the natural now. And then as they come back to the natural, your lings will basically be finishing soon. Because that's not instantaneous, right? Your drones would have to cross back again. And links have a quick, pretty quick build time of 17 seconds. So if they're halfway done, you're looking at like 8.5. So 8.5 seconds to go from here to here is... You're going to be getting there probably like 5 seconds later. And then the links spawn within like a second or a couple seconds of that. Uh, but anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, again... You, you pull the drones. They come back. Queens are on the ramp. You're making links. You pull the drones back again. And then you... You a move as you get through the lings. Like you, you like you can even do it when the drones are like right here mostly. If like if your queens are right here and right here, let's just say your drone is where the drones would be, and your queens are right behind it. That's the perfect place to a move because you dislodge the lings off your queens, and then you can get really annoying with it because what'll happen is is the lings will then a move the the drones instead, and it buys your queens a second. But if you don't relocate your drones, your drones will start dying really fast. But then if you go, hey, drones, mineral walk here again. And then drones, mineral walk here again, A move again. You dislodge the lings again. And it literally fucking it messes up AI of lings. And it makes the lings hit the drones for a few seconds. And then they go back to queens. They hit the drones for a few seconds. And then they hit the queens. So, like, you buy your queens more time to do damage and not die. And then you're... Lings spawn, and again, your lings will help in the fight, and then you have a much... And then once your lings are out, you can really try to... You can be like, hey, drones, how about I better walk through my own lings now and back up my lings and fight with my lings? And you can just repeatedly dislodge the, your drones on his lings going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with mineral walk, A move. What are mineral walk, A move? Because the way AI works for drones, if you mineral walk, and, you, and uh, your his lings ignore you. They don't even attack you if you mineral walk. As long as you have queens... Or your lings in the area. Because drones are not hostile and his lings will attack hostile units. The only way he would ever attack your drones in this situation, and nobody will do this by the way, ever, would be if he held position his lings and your drones better walk through it. Because then his lings would have nowhere to go. They ignore aggressive things hitting them on the sides. They would just hit whatever is in their face at this moment on top of them in melee range. And that would be your drones. But nobody's going to do that because that means he's not going to hit your queens effectively or your lings effectively. Because he's going to sit there while he gets beat on for a second. And his lings aren't going to swarm you, essentially. Nobody's going to do that. Everyone's going to A-move their shit because they want to swarm you. Every time I open it, like a little pocket opens, it gets filled up again by a new ling. Uh, which means he will ignore your drones unless they're on A-move. So you can turn your drones on and off A-move repeatedly in this situation. And then finally, the last piece is, if these lings came back, like to right there, and you made banes with them. You could easily make bane lings to deal with follow-up waves after the first wave because your drones will absolutely deal with the first wave if your queens are stacked your drones are stacked you do the dislodging shit new new lings spawn for you you would deal with the first like 10 lings 12 lings no problem 12 lings can't beat like 20 drones and two queens and like eight lings they can't and they can't kill the queens fast enough either if they're on the ramp to like push through it before that happens and then you would be able to break this. Your drones would be weakened. Your drones would not be, like, super healthy anymore. They wouldn't be like, we're ready for a round two. But round two would be zoned out by Banelings. 
So you would be fine. You would just be able to make lings and mains and call it a day. You know what I mean? So about everything I just said, does it make sense? And how, how does it, how do you feel about it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I mean, I guess I didn't actually look at the replay before that much, but it's a really striking like economy difference, right? Oh, hundred percent. You could have. So if, if so, yeah. if I just if I just managed to like survive somehow, I guess I would have been in an okay spot. Oh, you'd been in a great spot. And you can tell again. That's why I told you in the very beginning. The first thing we talked about. You need to scout his economy. Because you could have prevented the situation from being this drastic in the first place anyways. By instead of droning up to 30 versus 18 and getting all in by lings, you could have droned up to 25 or 24. And then you realized, oh, I have like seven drones above you on the mineral line and you have none. Um, okay, I'm making lings now because you are... And then let's say you go into his main. Why the fuck does he have no drones? Let's say you see like eight lings sitting on top of his ramp and he's just pooling lings there. You could easily... Yeah, I'm... <laughs> definitely seen that yeah for sure and then you could easily make enough links to deal with this uh uh by the time he gets there fucking super easy um yeah and then someone asked vibe why wouldn't you just do a triple evo queen wall thing if you see links coming instead you could do that too but that doesn't work on every map some maps you don't actually have creep from the hatchery that spreads to both doorways but on maps like this where it easily does if your creep is spread fast enough, by the time he leaves his base with the timing, which it is, you could have actually also just walled off your base, essentially, and bought yourself time, too. That also would have totally worked. So you could have just been like, oh, he's all in me, and I made drones. Evo, Evo, Evo. And then you could literally, I would say, in this situation, if you have no fucking lings at all, it would make more sense, and you're also waiting on a Bane Nest, it would actually make more sense to actually wall off with evos rather than leave a gap for a queen just fucking wall off because he's all in his fuck because if you have no lings at all and he's got like 20 coming at you or like 12 already and makes and you keep seeing it flood 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 it's not time to let your queen die um and there's even a cool queen trick you can do but that's super advanced you don't even need to worry about it just to tell you what it is though because i probably if anyone out there listening i probably piqued your interest if you actually put an evo chamber an evo chamber and an evo chamber and you leave a doorway for a queen but you put the queen in a whole position in front of the doorway so you can build another another evo chamber behind her what you can do when lings show up is in the, when the lings start smacking your queen if you're like well this queen's gonna die in this little doorway that's now the door is closed behind her essentially because a new evo chamber got built behind her you can actually build a creep tumor on yourself you can put a creep tumor right under your feet and then you can spam right click your queen behind your wall and the queen will get dislodged because the creep tumor dislodges her from the point she's standing. The lings dislodge her from the point in front of her. And the evo chambers dislodge her from the point behind her. So she's like literally path walking around. She like walks over everything like a colossus, essentially. And then she could walk through the evo chamber and get behind it. And then you can fight behind it. And uh, that's not always going to work, though, if the Zerg that you're playing against is super smart. Because if the Zerg is super smart and he sees you make a creep tumor, if he just backs the lings up for one second, your queen goes forward and then he's, and then you're stuck. Your queen just dies. So it's not always the most reliable thing. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's so advanced anyways. I just wanted to explain it for people who are curious. But, uh, yeah, you could literally just wall off. Queen teleportation. <laughs> no, what? Sorry? Queen teleportation. No, exactly, right? Uh, but yeah, you could just wall off, and then whatever Evo Chamber he focus fires, you could reinforce that wall by building new Evo Chambers behind it and resealing a new wall behind it. And your queens could just, you could pull the queen from the main, like inject first, and then pull it from the main and attack down here over the Evo Chambers, and build lings as well while you're doing this. And you could easily thin out the ling numbers <coughs> and your with your queens, and then when your Evo Chambers finish and he kills it, it spawns broodlings, which also thin out the ling numbers, and then by the time he actually breaches through your wall, You'll have lings enough to hold, and you ideally by then you'd also have banes starting. So you could do that too. There's so many ways you could hold this, but instead of just letting it kill you. So out of all those things, we explain now with that as well. Any questions about anything we just talked about? No, no. Okay. Uh, sure. Okay. So yeah, like right there. Uh, when he pushed you, with, with when he when you saw him pushing you, 
you definitely had enough time to do any of these responses we just talked about because you have about like 20 seconds to react like right now you see him at 320 like he's got a that's a fucking lot of links as you see links in your base already and that is a lot of links reinforcing that and these links in your base is not that's not like mass links it's, it was only six so that's that's standard that's like a, that's like a, that's like the maximum of standard there for like an aggressive opener because <coughs> he might want to deny your hatchery with that he might want to poke you whatever <coughs> but that's not standard right there that's fucking aggressive that, that's all like all in attack timing attack bullshit Uh, so yeah, but yeah, you had like 15 seconds to react to this. So you could have made a lot of those choices. And walling off would have been a great one. Alright. So, would you, uh, you want to jump into ZVZ number two? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. That's pro I think that might be even shorter. Actually, we, uh, they're both called ZVZ2. Do you want to do the second one or the third one? It's like ZVZ23, ZVZ22. Ah, uh, okay, one, one is... Uh, let's do two two. Okay. I think the first two is supposed to be the date. Oh, okay, sure, sure. sure. I don't know. I, oh, I see. I, was, two October. Uh, was, I got you. I got you. And, and then the third has like double underscores for some random. No, reason. I got you. Yeah. Because I can't type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all good. I didn't even pay attention to the oct. I was just looking at the numbers. Uh. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I think here, here, here is some incredibly poor decision making. I think. Okay. Well, it really does all come down to the Overlord Scout early on. That's so much info. And then it also the Ling follow-up scout, it's so much info again. And you're also not building an Overlord. That's a little bit brutal for you. It's going to throw everything off a little bit because you were Larva Cap there. So that kind of sucks. Uh, and if you're getting all in, that makes a big difference. Because it means your Lings are going to be... Uh, like, like, for instance, every second counts to make your hatchery not die. So if your hatchery dies this game... That's going to be a big reason why it could possibly happen. Because uh, now you're going to be fighting at a disadvantage, if that were to be the case, this game. For like three seconds or so. And three seconds of eight lings beating on your hatchery is pretty fucking huge. That's so much damage. Your it's like an extra... It's like a free fucking... If you really do the math on it, lings can hit for eight damage a second. And if there's eight lings hitting for three seconds extra because of that, because you can't take the fight as early now... That's uh, 8 times 8 is 64, times 3 seconds of that is uh, 192. So that's fucking... That, that's a big chunk of hit, hit points on your hatchery that just gets deleted for something as simple as that. Okay. So you're scouting. Your build's overall fine. Again, you got to uh, keep it, you know, obviously it's a replay. But yeah, always do the three drone thing in ZVZ. It's so important. And just make sure, too, when you do pull a drone off the middle line, try to not pull off a close patch. Try to pull off, like, a far one. So you don't disrupt the close patches, and then you can just fix the far one after. Okay, so no links have crossed before two minutes. So automatically automatically you'd be thinking you should be expecting to see the same thing you've done you should already be expecting to see ah he went hatchery first because he did not make any links cross at any point in time from now to, to the start of the game and we'll see creep okay so that's the, the this okay so now here's this is a final thing so it looked like it was going to be a hatch first and now right as you get there to confirm hatch first because you should literally see the creep right now just like you have creep here too you're clearly in hatchery range right now. And now he shows you six lings. This 100%, 100% is going to have a gas. This is not a 1213 either. This is way too late to be 1213. Like, if this was something like, uh, like a 1312, it's... The guy fucking made the lings and sat on them for like... 25 seconds and then left his base. That's what this would be like effectively for at 205. The fucking lings are supposed to cross the overlord way over here at like 140, not 205. 
So don't be looking at this and going, oh, yeah, it's a 1312. It's prob this is like a 1717 or some shit like that. Uh, or he just wanted to stockpile the lings and wait. One or the other is happening. And now he's got a hatchery that's done. So I would say, if I had to guess this guy's build order, just by seeing what we see now, now from that hatchery timing and how early that's been made, this to me looks like it might have been like a fucking, like a 14 pool into a hatchery into making wings. That's what I would guess. And how early that hatchery was made now makes me think that there actually is no gas. This guy's build is super fucking random. It's really weird. Okay. And it's fine. And here's why it's fine by how weird it is. This doesn't look... And you should, by the way, you should still scout. Not with your overlord this time because there's a very good chance he could have a queen. But you should still scout with like a zergling after this is over to go confirm if he's going to just cut drones and take gas and go crazy all in with like 14 drones. Because you could do that too. That's still a possibility if he wants to just completely gut his economy to go all in. Uh, but what I would guess this is now is this is very delayed gas or no gas yet because this hatchery is too early. You cannot fucking... But his lings are late. So there's trade-offs here. But this hatchery is relatively early. It's really far along. So he took that shit really fast. So it's going to really have a strain on his economy if he also if he not only made lings because he made a pool already and then he also made this hatchery this early and he's also mining gas he would have the shittiest economy ever on minerals which means that if you defend one attack you win the game so that's why you should definitely fucking scout with your lings with two lings or something so so far again does this make sense like this hatchery is too fast for him to like this seems like a mineral heavy build now but he's made a pool first um Task. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I did not. I did not really understand what was going on here. I was like, okay, links, um, hatchery. I guess. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, oh. <laughs> sort of like when when I see that combination, it's like usually like twelve pool and then like no, exactly. The hatchery, yeah, that, that's what's more. Whatever. That's what's more effective um, for sure. Like the links, and if it was that, the links should have been already at your base, like attacking the hatchery for the last fucking eight seconds. So this is very awkward. The thing is, the th oh, go ahead, sorry. The, the thing, the thing that, the thing that really makes I don't know that makes me feel bad about this replay, I guess, is now I actually make a bunch of links, and I think if I had done something more reasonable with them, I think I would have probably survived this thing. But so uh, what yeah, I would what say, happens. what I would say, you should be doing here, like because I could make links, because I just, I just delayed my overlord until I saw the links. No, so you, you honestly yeah. haven't made a mistake yet. You literally haven't made a mistake yet. I would say. Your build so far is fine. All you need to do right now, in your situation here, is understand that this is fucking delayed. Like, the, not, the, not the hatchery, sorry. I even like greenboxed it. The hatchery is not delayed, actually. It's uh, in terms of like what a 12 pool would look like. The fucking links are delayed. So fucking delayed. And... <laughs> yeah, because they like literally came out of the last minute, though, right? Yeah, like so again. Yeah, pr like uh, this is important to know this. Proper timings for lings to cross your overlord is around one thirty for a twelve pool, like one twenty five, one twenty seven, one thirty, right around there. It's, every map is a little different, but they're always almost the same. So you can't say it's the exact same second on every map. And also, if your opponent misses messes up by two seconds because he's fucking slow or something. That you can't guarantee that either. But there's a little bit of a range. Like right around 130 is a 12 pool. Sometimes a little bit under 130, like 128. What whatever, just something around there. 140 ish is a 13 12. For a proper 13 12 attack. 205 is not either of those. That is fucking super delayed. That is absolutely delayed to see these links crossing your overlord at like 205. It's very, very, very late. And this is not threatening really anymore. And the reason why is because you will have queens in time for this. You're 100% your queen should be out by the time this actually becomes a threat. So the fact that you make lings right now is a good idea. It's great. I love it because you already have natural advantage and he doesn't. He doesn't have a natural done yet. So you already, you're already pumping out larva faster than he is with double hatchery. He might have a queen faster than you, though, if he made a queen really early, which is his advantage. 
Uh, but these lings are not going to get to your base right now. They'll get to your base by the time you have lings, and then shortly after that, you'll have queens. Now, your overlord should absolutely stay, like, right here, okay? Like, in the area. So you can see the exit of his base. You want to see if he continues to send. And you should defend this initially with all your lings you just made. Like, if I were you, what I would do is I would make the initial lings you just made. Like, eight of them is fine. And then just start making drones. Okay? Just start making drones after, like, eight lings. Defend this until your queens are out. And the second your fucking queen spawns, send two lings to his base immediately to scout what the fuck is he doing. Because this build is awkward, and you want to get a read on it. Because, again, like I said, it could be gas. It's probably not, but, again, the fucking lings are super late. So this is not your traditional macro 12 pool type of build. So if your queens are out, you easily can defend the rest of this with two lings less of your own. No problem. Easy fucking peasy. And if you see any fucking lings continue to flood behind these front lings, you should probably, once again, do something in the form of more defense. Like, we talked about ideas. Queen ramp. Evo chamber wall. Uh, you making your own lings. You have your bane nest that you can start your, yourself and defend with that eventually. You can always run the drones into the main if you ever have to retreat from the queens. You could even, in a game like this, if you're suspecting that this guy... Uh, is doing something with gas that's going to be aggressive and you are worried about like let's just say hypothetically you're worried like I know we can't confirm he's going banelings yet but if you were worried about something like that you could even make a spine like one spine you could even put the spine like right there and then uproot it and put it down to the natural later all of these things will be fine you don't even have to do any one of them but as long as you do at least one of them you're fine so going forward, okay, you have to react in some way to what you're seeing here. So you made the lings, you made the queens. This is totally fine. I would love it if you make drones now, just for now. But let's see what happens. Watch your lings here. So you push them back. This is great. Super good for you, right? You pushed them back. I would say you don't want to push them back with everything. If you push them back, you're doing great because you just want to make sure... You guard your base until your queen spawn. Just scout with two lings. Because this is exactly what I was telling you earlier about the gas rule. The worst thing in the world you can do is run on the map when you haven't prioritized your gas. Okay? This is huge. This is why even if this guy wasn't doing a weird build, even if he was doing a standard build, and it was like your, his hatchery finished at the same time as yours did. And you guys were both doing the same exact build. If he put three drones on gas immediately and you delayed yours by filling it up one by one by one by one. And your first two drones would go on it relatively early. But your third drone would be on it at like 10 seconds late. He would have speed a little bit faster than you would. And there's a, there's, links can kill links super fast. And there's a moment where if you were like over here and he lured you all the way to his base. And right as you get here, his speed finishes. And he's got he lured you to his base so he's got more links. And you just decided to chase him there because he was running away from you. And right as you get here, he's got 14 lings and you've got 10. Your speed yeah, finishes. You've got your, little crystal, you've got your little crystal ball here because that's exactly yeah. what's going to happen. Your lings get speed after his kill yours. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, I just lost a bunch of lings when they were outnumbered. But you still need to scout. Just don't send everything. So, like, two lings is totally fine. Because if you scout with two lings, and you... Because he can't kill two lings with two lings. It's going to take too long. He's, you're probably going to get into his base and see something. So he's, if he shows you a lot more lings than what you have there, if, he, if you spot any sense of, like, the mineral line or whatever, if you're like, okay, this dude's fucking clearly making mass lings, and he's uh, all letting the shit out of me, now I know, you didn't lose everything in the process then, and you can still defend yourself. But, Yeah. So you have way too many links on the map right now. This is this is so scary for you. Because you're going to see what's happening and you're going to die for it, essentially. And like right here, even right here, you, st you still haven't lost the game. You're still fine. Because, again, you have all these options right now. Look at the, like, the nat like obviously his natural was late, right? But he still doesn't even have a queen there. You've got 
I love that you're making another queen, by the way. Super good. I don't like your Baneling Nest spawn lo uh, location, though. This is actually the worst location you could ever put it. You should put the, this Baneling Nest in one of two spots. Put it right there if you want to have a wall off. Or put it right, like, not here, but right there. If you want to have it as a no wall off and you want to have some type of a weird, like a different type of defense at your base. Or even, like, not right here, but like right there would also be somewhat okay. This wouldn't be as good as right there, but it would still be okay. And the reason why this wouldn't be as good is because this is a corner. It only like it's like a tiny gap, so like two links hit at you here and like two links hit at you there. And it's kind of scary. But if you put it right here, that's no longer a corner block. That's actually like multiple grid overlap here from the hatchery to the bane nest. And your queen could be in that hallway right there. And only like one link and one link would hit the queen in the middle. So it would make the queen live forever in the middle right there. If you tucked it away. And this would be a situation where you're confident that you can hold this without having to hold the ramp. Like with queens. Uh, and that would just give you a way to buy time essentially. And you're, Or you could put it in the front of the door. In the wall. And you could just be like, Bane, Evo, Evo. Wall off. Because this guy's clearly going to make a bunch of fucking lings and all in me. Like, seeing this, you're seeing Ling, 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 Ling. You need to fucking react to this. This guy is just making Lings. And it's sh he's showing it to you as well. You watched Ling spawn on those eggs multiple times. And now he's got Banes in your base. So now, this is now completely falling apart for you. So... <sighs> That's a moment where, first of all, your Ling shouldn't have been there. Like, all of them. It should have just been two Lings. And the rest of your Ling should have been defensive. Your Overlord positioning over here is fine. You could have definitely taken a look at what was going on out there. That would have been totally fine, too. But... Some sense of defense needs to happen for you. And... Again, it, it could be a spine, it could be a wall off, it could be fucking queens on the ramp, anything. Anything. And if you were to see something like this, there's a perfect defense to something like this, okay? So, he's got lings in your base, right? He's running around. <laughs> he's running around. You... He runs away. He runs down here. So now you're like, hmm, I wonder what he's doing. Look at your overlord. I actually love your overlord's positioning right now, by the way. And you see more lings here. Automatically, th just a lo that what you just saw alone there, that's so fucking relevant. Because anyone who's going to make six lings and run down across the map like this, and they also went pool before hatchery, and they're going to keep making... These are obviously not the same six lings that you saw below. That's only four, and they're way up here, and they just spawned. So if this guy's going to keep making lings, and he already has six down on the bottom of the map... This dude's clearly going to all in you right now. Cle like, it's very, very, very clearly going to be an all into you. So you need to you need to be ready for that. So the fact that you made a third queen is great. And I would say you should have Overlord right now. Like, this Overlord should go right there. And this Overlord right here should go right fucking there. And spread out your vision because you're getting all in right now. Like, you have three Overlords coming to the middle here. Like, all to this spot or some shit. Spread them out a little bit because you're about to get all in. For sure. And the easiest way you could deal with this, the easiest way you could deal with this, again, if you were only sending two lings out and you had the rest of your lings back here, you could actually make this queen inject the hatchery from right there and make this queen inject this hatchery from right there. Because if you saw six lings run south and he's making more, anytime anyone does that, that is such a big sign of Baneling. That is a massive sign of Baneling. Like he wants to just flood you with lings, new lings that spawn and make Banelings proxied at your, around your base. Somewhere over here in the area. Because he ran south and they're missing now. Because they didn't go south and go in front in your base. They went south and they're gone. So keeping tabs, right? And all you'd have to do to defend this, if, if you had overlords spread out, you would see it even sooner. But if you had a queen right here, and if you had a queen right here, all you'd have to do is go, hey, queen. Queen. Both of you, right click right here. And then as soon as, you know, as, soon as the queens are close... As they're, as they're already walking there, you could be like, hey, you specifically, go right there. You specifically, go right there. And these guys would not get in your main base. And you could go, hey, all you guys, as well, right-click the main mineral line. 
So you could be like, literally, you, all you guys, click there. You click there. Tell your queen to go to the ramp. Tell your queen to go to the ramp. That's also a way you could do it too. Easy fucking peasy. So your drones would evacuate. Your queens guard the door. You're making lings, and you have lings already here. And then all you have, all you'd have to do then is continue to make units and just make sure none of them run into the bains like in a clump. Queen ramp blocking in ZVZ is so fucking useful. You have to do this in aggressive scenarios, like, a lot. Nice splits, by the way. I mean, that that's... Those are some sexy fucking splits, dude. Honestly, that... that. <coughs> if you can split that well, you can absolutely guard the ramp. You, have, you absolutely have the micro to do that. That was sexy fucking splitting right there versus those mains. So... You're, you're more than capable of doing that. Just know that that's better than doing what you did here. This is like you've already fucked up and you're trying to like salvage the mistake. And then you GG'd again really early. You didn't actually need a GG here. You weren't dead. You have three queens. And you have two larvae sitting there. And you have a bane nest that's already done. You could easily go Evo, Evo, Evo. Guard with three queens, make a couple banes, and continue on your drones, which is an advantage already. You weren't even dead right now. <coughs> um, at all. And, like, queens... You could also just... you could you, Like, you could have genuinely, at this point in time, you could have made, like, four lings. Just, like, four lings. And you turn 100% of those four lings into banes. Evo chamber, wall yourself off for a sec. Buy yourself some time to make those banes. Queens attack behind the Evo chambers. Make drones. You could genuinely have done that. And then as soon as your Evo chambers are just about to finish, maybe cancel like the one in the middle and let the two on the sides finish or something. And then put your queens in the doorway. Because now, by that time, your banes would be finishing and you'd have queen bane defending your doorway. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. how, how are you feeling? How does that feel? How does that sound? More wolves, I guess. That, that's kind of good. I like wolves. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just gotta have some... You, ha you have actually had the advantage so hard both games if you just knew how to make a response. Because, like, the way... When you, if, if I was playing this game and you GG'd right there... Or if, if this was me, I would absolutely not have GG'd right here. If I had as sexy of a Baneling defense as you did right here, I would have 100% continued on. And I would have told all my queens, I would have told my, one of my queens to inject the hatchery, and then I would have had both of them come down to the natural. I would have told my lings to mineral walk. Actually, this is like clever shit here. What I would do is I would A move my... So this is shit that is like a little advanced, but you can totally do this if you understand the concept of abusing melee units. If I told my drones right now to A move right there, all my drones would bunch up on the south side of the hatchery. Okay, this is important to know this. Because it changes the trajectory of the drones where we're going to mineral walk them. So my drones would all clump up like right here, around the lings. They're going to be on the south of the hatchery. If I then go, hey drones, mineral walk there. They all will walk through the lings. They won't walk this way, up here and around the hatchery like that. They'll walk through the lings. And I will know, I know how fast the drone moves. So if my drones are already right here and I want to mineral walk through the lings, even though I'm already mailing his lings, I'll mineral walk and about half a second later, I'll A move the ground right there. And what will happen is, is my drones will get on top of my queen and I'll push the lings off my queen. And my queen will now only get hit by maybe one or two lings instead of like six. And my drones will surround the lings because not all my drones will get on the queen. Some of my drones will still be on the lings. Because my drones won't be perfectly stacked. So I'll surround the lings and push some of them off the queen. And these lings, which is only seven of them actually, by the way, will die so fucking fast to 14 drones. I'll like insta-kill two of them, and the other like four or five will die pretty fast shortly after. And my queen will most likely not die. So you can totally do that kind of shit and fuck over AI of melee units. Because you can literally... It's like a force field to Protoss. You can get between them and push them backwards. Uh, 
And then it, these queens come down the ramp. You could transfuse this queen back to full health. And you could have your queens in the front. And you could be like, yeah, he's still flooding me. Let's go ahead and Evo Chamber wall it off. And you would have been fucking perfect. So in such a good spot. Because you could take the situation and go, all right. I have all my drones still mining in the main. We're still fully saturated there. We're still basically really well saturated on the natural. We're looking great. Look at your opponent's base. This looks like shit. This is not intimidating at all. This is pretty bad. So you have a massive lead in economy. And then also you'd have three queens as well. So you could turn this into like a roach build if you wanted to. You could be like, all right, two Evo Chambers. And then I'll make a roach warren like right there. And then I'll just take a layer. And I'll, I won't even make lings anymore. I'll just make like the four banes in case he continuously floods me and floods me and floods me. And those banes will help a lot there. <coughs> and then be like, cool, make a roach one. And then I'll, you know, I'll make my drones all the way to full base two saturation. And eventually just make roaches with like plus one and I'll get speed. And if he never stops flooding, 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 the next time he floods another, let's say you, like you make four banes and all these lings die and like one more round comes out and let's say he's got a total of like 16 lings and like five banes at your base. And you have four banes and three queens in the doorway because you made two more queens and you have three queens actively right now in the doorway. And they have like... 200 or they have like between all of them they have like 100 energy 80 energy and like 70 energy so they can all transfuse at least once maybe twice which is good as fuck for queens and then let's say you can, he can't break that with his initial units he has there and now another round of like 20 lings leaves his base just make like four more lings if you're not ready to make roaches yet because you're not fully saturated just spend two larva to make like four more lings and make another four banes with your queens that are still in the doorway and every time he tries to engage you have like one baneling in front of the door and like three behind. Like one baneling is like right on your queens in front of it. And every time he comes to attack your baneling, literally just waddle it back and forth with micro. Just be like, hey, queen, hey, baneling, go left and right. So like I'll move you, move you, move you, move you. So you're really close to the queens and you won't die. And if he sends one ling at a time to kill that, your queens like insta kill the ling. Because three queens won't bop a ling super fast. But if he sends a clump of lings, you blow them up. And then as soon as he like the door is cleared and you have no bane outside, move one queen down, move one bane out, move one queen back up. Do it again. And it always like hotkey that you could literally not even hotkey your queens if you didn't want to. Or you could you could if you wanted to. But you could you could just like hotkey the bane. Like be like, hey Baneling, you're on group three. And every time I see a link come this way, three, right up, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click. And he can't physically engage the door then. Like he can't actually swarm the queens anymore. And it's so easy to be like, make drones, make drones, make drones. There's so many ways you could deal with this. In, like, clever ways that make it really hard for him to attack you. <clears throat> so, hopefully, what I've said has given you some ideas on how to, like, take advantages against people who play this way, which is a lot of Zergs and Diamond League, by the way. Tons of Zergs and Diamond. Yeah, well, honestly, I think, like, my, my, my bitching about CVC is, like, all about, you know, how hard it is to get to, you know, a point where I can make roaches. And then when I can make roaches, you know, if if I lose, I lose. But I feel much more comfortable with like roach versus roach than like no for sure speedling versus well versus speedling whatever. The ideal moment when you want to make roaches, there's two times to make roaches. Okay, number one, you make roaches when you see aggression from your opponent, and you have more economy than they do. That's a fine time to make roaches. That, so that number doesn't have an exact number on it because it depends how many drones your opponent makes. And that the only way you can figure that out is through decent scouting. And if you're like, okay, I sent a Ling into his base and he's got four drones on the middle line and I have 14. And I have a roach one that just finished. It probably And now he's starting to flood my base as well. Like he's like It's probably not the worst time to make some roaches if you have a roach warrant available with like your Ling Bane or whatever. That's fine. But that's if he's all inning you. And that's if he's not making drones and you are. And it, the, the same thing could happen if you have, if he's got 20 and you have 28. If he's got 28 and you have 36, whatever, like blah, blah, blah. If you just have extra drones over him because he cut earlier than you did and you make drones, you made more of them for longer and now you start making roaches off of a better economy, that's always a good time to have roaches in ZBZ early game. The other time when it's appropriate to make roaches is if you scout him and you always go, I went through his middle line. He looks exactly like me. He's got like four lings and a bunch of drones. We both are going mass drones. The perfect time to make roaches then is when you're saturated properly on three bases. 
and you need to scout at least once a minute, at least once a minute, maybe twice a minute, so maybe every 30 seconds ideally, with two slowlings or one speedling. So to make sense of that, you scout with two lings when speed's not done yet, but as soon as speed's done, you can literally get away with one ling at a time. And you avoid the queen ideally, so you don't run right here and then right here and then right here. You'd run right here and then there 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 and then like there and then there and there and there. So does that make sense? You run like behind the middle line with one ling. You just take a lap behind it and you count the drones. And you always go to the newest base and work your way inwards. Because no one's going to fucking have a base that looks like that and then saturate a third. Because the drones have to walk dis further distances to saturate the third, so they're not going to do that. That's just bad play. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Yes. So uh, that, yeah. And then if you're in the roach phase, like that's just smooth sailing, right? You can just make like roaches, make some ravagers, you're going to be super happy. <laughs> then at that point, just like expand as you need to. Like take another base so you can maintain good saturation. So if you're not going to mine out and just have bad drones there. Uh, but yeah, the early game openers. Your openers are great. You just have. You just need to actually believe in the responses of uh, how well you can defend yourself. Because a cool thing. Here's a cool thing to know. Okay. And we'll talk about the Evo Chamber thing for a second. That's like probably the easiest way you could overall do this, by the way. If you wall off with Evos when your opponent plays aggressive like this, an Evo Chamber, if you start it right as you see him at his base with either an Overlord or a Ling, and he's starting to leave his base, and you start Evos within one second of that. Like you like you react to like you're like, okay, three drones go now. Build, build, build. If you do that within one second, the chances of your Evo Chambers finishing before they die is like over 90%. It's like fucking very unlikely that it's going to die. And an Evo Chamber build time is very fast. It's only uh, like fucking 15 or it's like seven, uh, 25 seconds. Sorry. It's 25 seconds. So if you think about 25 seconds, he has to like, if you build it within a couple seconds of him leaving his base, you have like 10 seconds of time for it to be building before he even gets there. And then as he's there, you have like another 15 seconds of time for your queens to smack his ass off the wall. And you'll probably kill... Like one queen can kill one ling in about three seconds, roughly. Like a little bit faster. Like it's roughly about three seconds. So if you have like two queens killing lings every about three seconds, and you have 15 seconds of Evo Chamber stalling going on right there, automatically your queens are going to kill... Uh, five lings each. So you're going to kill ten lings before he even gets through the wall. This guy right now has twelve lings. You know what I mean? Like, you would actually ki like you would actually kill them off the wall. And the more lings that die off the wall, if there's not even a fully covered wall anymore, it's not fully covered in surface area because too many lings are dead. Let's say it takes ten lings to cover surface area and he only has ten. And now you're going, now he's got nine, now he's got eight, now he's got seven, now he's got six. He's not miss he's not hitting the full surface area of the wall anymore, so it won't even die as fast. So it will live longer than the build time, like for sure. Uh it'll live like twenty five seconds now longer than that, or like thirty five seconds longer than that. Or forever if you kill all the lings. Uh but your your queens will thin out the numbers pretty fucking fast. Like they'll actually help substantially well. And um the What's it called? Uh, that also, that 15 seconds or so is about the same time as a bu uh, the build time of a Ling, which is 17 seconds. So you have lots of, lots of possibilities here for you, essentially, to make the most of this. And I know, like, even if you didn't have an Evo Chamber wall here, this guy wasn't even all in you. He was actually making drones right now. He actually started making drones. So he wasn't even flooding. If you'd have reacted again with your queen, just to go, like, even if you, like, so no Evo Chamber, no lings. You're just like, oh, fuck, I wasn't making any attention to anything. And now he's like, he's hitting my Bane Nest right here. If you just moved your queen to, like, right there again, or, like, right there again, 
You know what you could do? Let's just say you go right here, okay? You walk with your queen right now. He's coming right now. You immediately saw this happening. And you were like, hey, queen, walk right there. His lings get stuck between this choke point right there. And you know what you could do? That This is, again, clever ways to fuck over lings. You could tell your queen to go right there. And then it's going to go there. And it's going to start attacking lings. You don't have to micro the queen anymore. You could take all your drones. And you could say, hey, drones, right click this patch right here on the bottom middle. This patch right there. All drones right click that patch. All the drones would group up right there. And then you could say, hey, drones, right click this patch uh, like right um, here, for instance. Okay. And then the drones would move. They'd be, they would all be on the south end of the middle line. They would all like it would only take about one to two seconds to get the drones mostly down here. And again, you don't have to have them perfectly stacked. You can just need them, all, need them all to be like within the green box radius. All on the south side of the middle line. And then you can say drones right click right there. And as soon as they touch that middle line, right click that patch right there. And what they would do is there's a good chance you're going to get through the lings really heavily. And you could A, move them like right around here. And you could smash a lot of the... Like you could stack your drones into the lings and kill them. And... Uh, you can fuck over the, the lings pretty hard that way. Another thing you could do, another cool thing you could do, is you could tell your drones to... Uh, you, you could even, honestly, just spam, straight up spam right-click that patch right there and do the same thing again. Your drones would be like kind of staggered from the top and the south side of it, but you would... If the lings are kind of stacked in this area a little bit, you could, it's fine as well. But uh, like that's just one way you could deal with it. Another way you could deal with it, probably... This is just an idea, right? I probably would not recommend you do this, but... You could actually tell your drones to walk like down here, like just right click down here. You could then right click this patch. So they all would stack up on the outside of the middle line over here this way. And then you could tell them to right click deck down here and they would mineral walk through the lings and you could dislodge the queen off the lings again. You probably wouldn't do that because it would take too long, but you get the point, right? It's clever ideas on how you can fuck with the melee units with drones. Like drones actually fucking destroy lings if you micro uh, properly. As long as you're not like two to one, if it's not like two links to every one drone, you're gonna have a good t like it's gonna be mostly okay. So as long as you're not outnumbered, because you gotta realize you also have queens there, and you don't have to just a move the drones and let them just a move. You can a move the drones for a split second when they, when you stack them, a move for a second. You fucking pop a couple links. Right click the mineral patch again, do it again. Right click the mineral patch again, do it again. Right click the mineral patch again, do it again. And meanwhile, your queen is still there and your queen is repeatedly getting the aggro of the lings. And you're just picking lings off the queen with your drones. Because drones and lings do the same damage. So if you stack up the drones, you can literally insta-kill lings. So that's huge. That's huge advice right there. That's, that's a big difference between players who are really hard to kill in ZVZ and players who don't know how to survive in ZVZ. Drone micro is pretty massive there. And it's all about mineral abuse. Mineral walk abuse. Like, pathing abuse. It's huge. But yeah, anyways. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a lot of, like, good. It's a lot of good notes and I guess a gen also a general, like, Maybe I shouldn't get like mad and GG out immediately. Oh, definitely not. Stay a little bit longer I, and, actually, and actually see what the fuck I can do with my drones and queens. You totally can. Have, you 100% GG'd out too early in both of these games. You actually had a very winnable position. If, especially if you. Because like, obviously, you waited till the last second. You're like, you wait till the lings are on your queen. You don't even move the queen, and then the queen dies. And it makes everything a lot harder. You can't do the, the queen trick. You can't do the Evo trick. You can't do the queen trick again with a baneling nest right there. You can't do the queen trick on the ramp. You can't do any of these things that I said if you just let your queen die like that and you don't react at all. Uh, but if you make any of these reactions a little bit faster, 100% you can win the game. So you just need to pay a little bit more attention. You need to try to scout a little bit more effectively in the early game. Uh, like try to get a link into his base and confirm what's going on. It makes it really easy to read. And... Uh, Try to implement some of these forms of defense I said, and you'll be like, holy fuck, drones are overpowered. Drones are super reliable when I get attacked by something like this. If you mineral walk and shit like that. I mean, 
that is something very nice about when sort of when you are the defender and it actually works. The fact that like if the opponent makes a shit on the links and you actually survive, then you have a really really easy time usually. Oh, hundred percent. Uh, if all your drones are so high, make it, if you make it through the yeah. if you make it through the gauntlet, so to speak. Yeah, well, you just gotta abuse positioning. The worst thing, the so. The best thing you can do is limit the amount of lings that can attack at a time. That's the best thing you can do against lings. If you have less lings than he does, if he's got 30 and you have 4, he's got way more than you do. The best thing you can do is make him only able to fight you with like one-fifth of what he actually has. And the other four-fifths of his army, the other 80% of his army is running around like fucking derps. Being like, when is, it, when is it our turn? When is it our turn? We can't fight yet. <coughs> and then, you know, what that does, it's not just about making him run around and not do anything. That's not all it means. Time also allows you to make more lings yourself, to make more queens yourself, to make banes yourself, to do all these fucking things that completely shit on massive amounts of lings. And then drones in the meantime can help assist the queens. As long as you know how to tuck your queens away to limit time for him. So if you're standing in the... Like this right here. this no, If I were to look at your queen right now and put a number on it, I'd say four. And the number represents, oh, this queen's going to die in four seconds. So if I hit play right here, he starts hitting you at 344. I clearly expect... I very much expect this queen to be dead by 348. So it's fucking almost dead right now at 347, right? The screen's probably going to die within a second or maybe two seconds. That's not a good number. That's a fucking low number. But if you put your queen right there, that number would be 12. It'd be a lot longer, like 13. It's definitely not going to live forever, but it's, it's going to buy a lot more time. It's going to buy like three times the amount of time that this queen currently bought just now. And... Like I said before, if a queen kills a ling every three seconds, you killed one ling and died. If your queen was here, you would kill, uh, instead of one ling for three seconds, you'd, if you're going to survive for like 13, you'd kill like four lings. Right? And this guy only had uh, eight lings to attack you with. So instead of him killing or losing one ling out of eight and then killing your queen, he'd lose four lings out of eight and then kill your queen. And that's if your Jones didn't even help at all. So you kill, uh, you know, one eighth of his army instead of half of his army. So that that's just about going, hey queen, right click right there. And then if you actually grouped up the drones, fucking sixteen drones could easily make the difference against seven lings or eight lings as well. Easily, like you would actually not lose your queen, and you would fucking destroy all the lings so goddamn hard. All it would take is you would go, hey drones, stack up right there, a move once. Drones would start getting a concave. They would smack a couple lings initially, and then they would start fanning out and make a concave. And as they do that, you'd start getting damage taken on some of your drones. Even if you just A-move that, you would kill the lings, but you'd probably lose like three drones if you didn't micro anything after that. But if you just said, hey, drones, after I A-moved him and the drones got one attack off and they started to fan out, you hit drones, right-click the patch again, restack up one more time, A-move again. You would destroy a couple lings immediately again. And then at that point, you're... The queen and the, like, you would probably only have like one or two lings left versus 16 drones and a queen. And you could at that point just be like, hey, drones, go back to mining minerals because the queen will handle the last two lings because of how we just micro this. No problem. So you could very easily could have dealt with this with what you had if you just moved your shit a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess any any final questions about early stuff in ZVZ because the later part I'll say this one more time the later part would literally be like I said before roaches are good when you have a drone advantage and you're getting all in that's a great time to make roaches or a great time to make roaches again is again when you have a three base saturation and you can just max out on it and then you can just play the roach game yeah I mean that's what I sort of what I aim to do sort of want to do so. yeah Maybe maybe another day we can do like a replay where I actually get to that stage and something interesting sure. happens with roaches. The the easiest way to get to that stage, though, I'm telling you right now, is to scout with two lings before speed and with one ling after speed's done. 
to get reads on the mineral lines. You always scout the newest space and work your way inwards every time. And you uh, you count the economy. Like, you ha you should just, before you scout, get a read on your economy. Be like, how many drones do I actually have? Look at my natural. Uh, it looks like about fully saturated. So when you get to his natural, you don't see, like, six and go, I don't know what that means right now. What What is, uh, he's got six. Okay, what does six mean? Compare it to yours. What are you doing? Are you making drones? If you're making drones and you have 16, well, if he's got fucking 16, he's also making drones. But if he's got six and you have 16, he's clearly not making drones. Time to make roaches. And then, then don't just make roaches for the rest of the game and be, like, scratching your head. I don't, why is he not attacking me? Scout him again in, like, 30 seconds. And if he has drones now, and you have drones, like equal numbers of drones now, but you have roaches and he doesn't, maybe he fucked up his, like, you had a drone lead. You, even if you, he, like, catches up to you, you still win then, because you had a drone lead for longer than he did. You had more money than he did. But not everyone plays this game perfect. Some people play this game really potato-y. So sometimes people just make roaches for no reason and then make drones and then make roaches and then make drones and then they make roaches and then make drones. It's like, okay, this guy clearly is paranoid and doesn't know what he's doing. But if you scout his economy and you respond to a low economy way lower than yours and you just make some roaches, but then you scout it again. And if he's now making drones again, you can stop making roaches and that's now safety roaches. And you continue maintaining a lead on economy with him. And you scout again, 30 seconds later. Because you're, you're literally scouting every inject cycle, essentially. And you're going... What did you make this time? What did you make this time? Or at least every two inject cycles. As long as you scout at least once to twice a minute, that's fine. But if you scout once in five minutes, you're fucking crossing your fingers hoping you don't have the guy making units for two and a half minutes and he's going to just flood you, right? You're just going to die if that happens. So periodic scouting every minute is insanely good. And you don't have to do it all game. You just have to do it until you're saturated on three bases. And you can be saturated on three bases by, like, five and a half minutes. And you don't even start making links until, like, 2.30. Two, two minutes. So it's literally only, like, two minutes of this or three minutes of this and you're done. So it's, like, five scouts, roughly, or, like, four or five scouts. Because you, you don't have to do it every 30 seconds exact. Just try to do it roughly every 30 seconds to every minute. So even if it's, like, every 45 seconds, that's totally fine. And it would literally add up to, like, four scouts over the course of three minutes. And then that's it. You're done. Scouting phase is over. If he hasn't owned you yet, doesn't matter because you're in the roach phase now. So you're roaching. If you can do that, you're already Masters League. Probably GM. But, yeah. There's obviously more to GM than just saying scout. Uh, there's a lot more reads and shit you got to be able to make and everything. Uh, but definitely, uh, you'd be defending everyone in Masters like no problem if you could uh, read the game like that. But now, with that being said, we'll definitely talk about that at a future day. Uh, if you want to throw a roach replay my way uh, next time, or whatever makes you happy, you know, if we talk about roaches, I'll I'll definitely delve deeper in roaches with you. But for now, get out of the ling phase. Try to like survive with the ideas we talked about here and how to not die to lings, all ins, and shit. And that'll definitely help you get to the roach phase and uh, progress. Oh, very cool. uh, awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, it, was, it was good talking to you again and getting some of that vibe wisdom. Yeah, no worries, man. It's good talking to you too. And uh, I'm glad you have some time to chill and you're not so busy. Uh, and go play some go play some games. Go play some StarCraft. And yes, go yeah. fuck some people up with the, the new ZVZ early game tips. Um, great, great. Have, have, have a good day, and uh, I, I guess enjoy Diablo. Yeah, right. I'll probably play StarCraft in a while today because i got to raid today. Uh, yeah. But I'll do StarCraft until that. And maybe Diablo later tonight. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, Diablo's been pretty fun. Uh, have you played it uh, at all? So, so, so much Diablo nostalgia. I didn't really play D2 that much. Okay. But, um, I did play D1. I played a lot of D1, too. Too as well. much when I was a kid. Yeah. The, the best thing about Diablo 1 was being a barbarian or a warrior and then chasing the succubus as they just run away at the same speed that you walk at them and you're like, okay, I can't kill these fucking things. <laughs> and that's, a pro that's a problem. Like, they, they, will never, like, they will never be able to like, remake that game because it's actually 
near unplayable. No, exactly. Like the Wookiee yeah. feeding graphics That's pretty or whatever. Bad. But at the time, it was the shit. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, the strategy of Diablo 1 is to literally start the game and then just uh, sell everything in your inventory and then get as much gold as you can, drop it on the ground, and then pick it up when you pick up a potion off your belt and then dupe your gold and then just buy everything off the vendor and then go kill shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking duping in that game was so easy. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyways, uh, yo, dude, I hope you have a good rest of your night as well. And uh, thanks again for doing a Thank lesson. You. I appreciate it. Yeah. See, see you. Bye-bye. Right. Later, man. All right, guys. Well, that was a lesson with uh, Tesked. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something uh, as well. All those Zergy players out there. This has been a diamond level zbz lesson so good luck to you guys and uh thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one whatever it might be and good luck goodbye later guys